Yeah, but Dr. Liu, um, most of the reports that compare PCR with, with the culture shows that the virus cannot be viable after eight, nine days uh, in, in mild patients or moderate disease patients. Very true. But sometimes uh, in some very severe patients, there are some few reports suggesting that the virus can be recovered until 30 days. My question is, there, uh, we are in Latin America now in the peak of the pandemic. We don't have many uh, uh, intensive care beds. And so many of my colleagues say, this patient is admitted in the ICU for 35 days or 40 days. Why mm -hmm. I cannot move this patient to an area without because. COVID isolation? Uh, what do you see is the safe timing for releasing the isolation uh, inpatient in uh, respiratory assistance in intensive care? Um, perhaps if I, uh, if I answer that question. Describe the Hong Kong situation, uh, and then uh, Christopher may add on to his experience. Uh, I mean, uh, we do have um, uh, uh, variabilities among the patients and uh, people on the two extremes, or patients on the two extremes you know, observe. So it is definitely that for the national societies or the national uh, health systems to decide a uh, agreeable uh, a criteria for discharge and also emissions. Okay, so that is very important because uh, it related not only with uh, scientific findings, but also the practicality of the resources that you can mobilize. In Hong Kong, uh, all the uh, isolations are remains within the uh, public hospital system. So we have only one system, that is the hospital authority. And she takes care of all the isolation facility in, in, in the cities. So if you, are, if you are being treated by private uh, physicians, they need to refer you into the system. So in fact, they have a full uh, database of all the positive cases. And, and uh, with this experience, they're making sure that uh, people discharge uh, either they could be uh, care uh, at a suitable facility, or they themselves uh, have the ability of care themselves, of self-care. So that is very important. So once you discharge home, uh, the hygiene advice given by nurse, nurses are strictly uh, implemented. So the patient are advised to uh, keep, uh, I mean, still put, put it on the mask uh, for a, a two more weeks, and then to observe their symptoms, uh, self-check their body temperatures and uh, they were provided with a hotline where they can inquire with our medical teams uh, to to get some uh, uh, consultations on, on whether they need to return to the outpatients uh, for check up uh, as soon as possible and that really related to different uh, uh, chronic diseases because in hong kong those uh, um, uh, hospitalized, that, uh, those patients that have been followed up at the hospitals uh, with the different chronic diseases, uh, they have set up a, a contingency term for their own group. Oh, so now let's move on to another topic that you asked. So people that could probably be uh, more fragile, uh, they treated in the uh, ICU, and, and hopefully he reached the uh, criteria of discharging from the ICU to a general ward. And what is the carry? Okay. So in Hong Kong, we designed the so-called step-down ward, step-down ward. So uh, that is a situation where mm -hmm. we still keep uh, the isolations uh, environment with good hygiene and infection control practice. But then the nursing care uh, could be uh, lesser than as in the acute hospital. Now, this, this, this type of concept where the patient are being cared at two levels was much more uh, experience in, in mainland, where they have the fun time, the so-called mobile cabin hospitals. It is a temporary hospital that set up uh, that can accommodate a greater number of people uh, before they're being discharged back to home or to their community. So this is a good experience in particular in South America, where you probably have uh, some uh, vaster places and, uh, I mean, a uh, factory that may be uh, able to be uh, temporarily uh, rental to the government for set up such kind of facility or even uh, exhibition hall in Hong Kong 
uh, we are a very crowded city. We don't have an open space as, as much as, as you have. But then we have a huge uh, exhibition hall, which is now uh, laden, uh, 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 opened, because all the activities have been curtailed. It has been stopped because of this COVID. So they are willing to, to be in a land out uh, for, for, for such kind of a step down care. Okay, of course, uh, from time to time, there will be one or more uh, that becomes uh, more seriously ill, deteriorated, and then you need to refer back to the uh, uh, to the to the acute hospital, as I mentioned earlier. But you see, in Hong Kong, we are really very crowded, and even our nursing home, that is the elderly home, they are probably not uh, best suited for people who cannot care themselves, require the assisted care, personal care, to be managed at at a very crowded condition like Hong Kong. So, so that is another experience where, uh, where, where cities where you have probably have a, a more crowded area, uh, uh, the, 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 the basic social classes will focus with that. You probably need to plan off about the discharge strategy. Because once if you discharge them and then they cannot manage well, there will be a return the back file become a search. You know, nowadays, the search is the most difficult, the most challenging problem for all the health plan. So if you search, you, you in fact, um, um, you in fact uh, make the whole healthcare system um, uh, cannot operate in a normal way because of the large number of people in your A and E department, a lot of people waiting for admission to ICU and your ICU team people are overworked and they are tired and some of them may get infected and need mm -hmm. to be, I mean, uh, uh, out of work. So that is that is really a problem. So, again, okay, to you, Dr. Okay. Hoi. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you, Dr. Liu. I, I, as, as you alluded to, I, I think I think this is uh, the, the case. We're, we're really dealing with different pressures in the context of different health services. Um, in, in southern China, in Shenzhen, we were fortunate in that we could guarantee, we could retest uh, patients before discharge. So we typically required uh, on the standard basis two negative PCRs prior to discharge from isolation. Um, and at our hospitals, uh, actually, uh, we required, we increased, I, I increased the requirement to three negative PCRs over 72 hours. Again, again, this won't be possible in every service, but coming back to Marta's original question about adaptive immunity, um, it is possible to have serially negative samples and then for it to come back positive later on. I, I think I recall one particular patient where we did seven PCRs serially mm -hmm. for COVID and they were negative, 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 positive, negative, negative positive and and i think sometimes these again to do with the sensitivity and setup specificity of the test um uh -huh. there can be some technical issues sometimes but all, all i can say is in that situation you, you have the opportunity to to retest to revalidate what you're doing um in terms of the virus shedding itself um it is variable the, the part of the problem is of course we know that the asymptomatic transmission of covid happens in the early days when the patient isn't exhibiting particular symptoms, but is uh, perhaps generating viral loads that are then being communicated in, 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 um, in public spaces and mm -hmm. on, on contact surfaces and droplet spread. So really to our mind, um, the best way to break the chain of transmission and to adhere to the, the sort of principles of infectious diseases control by identifying and isolating you know, uh, confirmed positive cases, uh, we, we really do have to scale up uh, testing. And antibodies uh, are difficult because yes. adaptive immunity is not necessarily sustained. And this is the whole question about vaccines and whether or not mm -hmm. over time uh, they will provide uh, long-term or sustainable protection to the individual. Um, I have no doubt, I, I think uh, Dr. Seward mentioned uh, previously that uh, there have been uh, uh, vaccine studies done. There's a, a very good one in, in The Lancet last week uh, by a company called CanSino, um, which have, have looked at the, 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 the sort of antibodies that can be generated with a modern vaccine. Um, and it seems to work 
reasonably well on the basis of the data that's been published. The, the, the issue is, can this be sustained over time? 